So today I would like to talk about the Christian wasteland. I'll tell you what I mean in a minute. But first, I have to apologize because I realize that sometimes on here I can come across as very judgmental and condescending. And I don't mean to be, especially to people who don't deserve it, but it's just I was led astray in spiritual things and the consequences have been very painful. And so I get upset at that. So I never mean to take it out on any particular person, especially people who had nothing to do with it, if that's you. So, so <laughs> on to the Christian wasteland. Speaking of what I just spoke of, the Christian wasteland I describe as Christian culture in which hardly anybody actually knows the Lord. And what does that produce? What it produces is a bunch of guesses and a bunch of theories and a bunch of recitations out of the Bible, which are good, but which often conflict and often don't make sense, such as the story of Pharaoh and how Paul tries to describe it in Romans 11, and such as Paul's take on women, even though he says in Galatians that there is neither male or female in Christ, but then he goes on to make some very strict rules about how women can behave in church <laughs> in, what, in 1 Corinthians and other things. There's just so many things in the Bible. If you've ever watched any of my other videos, you know they just, the Bible is not completely flawless like everybody says it is. It's just not. Is it inspired by God? Absolutely. Is the Word of God in there? Absolutely. Is it. <laughs> I revere it and I love it, but you have to call a spade a spade. So anyways, how that impacts Christian wasteland, because people, when they don't know the Lord, they theorize, they quote the Bible, and they just have their own opinions and ideas as to how God is like, how God is. And when you live in that kind of environment, when the object of your faith, the object of your affection, the object of your worship in the church as a whole, right? Christianity, billions of people. We're all there for what? We're all there for Christ and for God, okay? And for their spirit, okay? There's a lot of other stuff that goes on, but that's that we're there for them, right? That's why we exist as the church. And when when nobody or very few people actually know him and there's just a bunch of theor theories and theology and doctrinal statements and opinions and emotions and all this stuff around God, it makes people insecure. It's just a fact. It's just the way it works. And I lived that for decades, right? Because you'll hear one sermon that makes that paints God out to be a completely loving, merciful, gentle guy, right? <laughs> okay? And then you'll hear another sermon over here that makes him out to be terribly fearful and horrible and, you know, just going to send a bunch of people to hell and, you know, there's only a few that are going to make it and all this stuff. And you're like, wait a second, if he's this intimate, loving, caring father who cares about every detail of our lives, but yet, well, over here, you're telling me that you know, billions of people are going to hell. It's like, right? And everything in between. And other things, right? Things outside of that spectrum on different theological spectrums, right? And so you get all these ideas of God in your head, right? And so over here, you can be living in peace and peace and rest. And over here, you get all fearful and anxious and you start to work really hard. And you're like, oh my God, I got to get my act together. And oh my God, I got to do this. And then you hear a sermon like that that's like, oh, I can just relax. And about God's grace, right? And about God's sovereignty. Then you hear one over here like, no, you better get it together. Like all of God's commands, you need holiness, right? And just, you, you get, if you're in that long enough, you, you just realize that it's like, it all conflicts with each other. Okay? And you just basically end up... You, uh, so, what's the solution to that? That is the Christian wasteland, okay? And what's the solution to that? The solution to that is getting to know him yourself. 
personally, having a personal relationship with Jesus himself, who is the express image of the Father. When that happens, he begins to clear all that stuff up for you. He begins to say, as with happens with anybody you get to know, you start to know the truth about them. You start to go, oh, you're actually like this. You're actually like this. I can chuck this, 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 and this. And I can stand on this, 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 and this. And he's like, yes. And here, also let me show you all this other new stuff about me that you didn't know and that you won't know if you just rely on other people's opinions, if you just rely on sermons, if you just rely on the Bible, although the Bible is very helpful, it's not the, it's not the epitome of knowing God. In fact, it's, it's not knowing God, right? The point of the Bible is to, know, is to know God. That's the point of the Bible, to live in love with him, the first and greatest commandment, to know Jesus. We've been called into fellowship with our fellowship is with the Father and with Jesus Christ, his Son, it says in 1 John, right? And Paul says in 1 Corinthians, God the Father has called you into fellowship with Jesus Christ, his Son, right? Fellowship, it means communication, relationship. So, the solution to the Christian wasteland is getting to know him, getting to know Jesus yourself. Developing a real, honest, authentic relationship with them consistently year after year after year after year, day after day, right? Every day, week after week, month after month, year after year, forever. That's what a committed relationship looks like. And once that happens, he will show you exactly what he's like and you'll learn exactly what he's like because you're in a relationship with him. You can't help it. And it will settle you and it will secure you and all of the noise won't bother you anymore. You'll still listen to it, right? Because we still have the humility to listen and submit to our leaders and stuff. But you, you won't get bothered by it when you hear a bunch of fluff. You'll be like, hmm, okay, cool. And then you'll go back and you'll stick with the Lord. <laughs> and then you'll hear stuff that's really good and you go, oh, that guy, that's cool. I agree with that. Hey, Lord, that guy must know you or that guy's got it right or whatever, right? This is the cure for living in the Christian wasteland. Thank you and have a nice day.